Hey there, I'm going to do a real quick video here um, for Battlestar Galactica. I'm actually hosting a game of this with some friends who had never played before. So I'm really recording this video for them, uh, but I'm going to share it with the channel because some of you may may be interested in the game and never played it or, <clears throat> you know, want to have questions or whatever. Um, this is going to be a quick um, how to play. And then it's also going to briefly cover some setup options, things like that. But it's mostly going to be focused on how to play. So um, uh, I'm going to try not to be as long-winded as I can be in some of my other videos, but let me just dive right in. This is Battlestar Galactica. I have all the expansions, and we will be playing the home uh, variant, um, where we're going to try to go home. And we're also playing with the uh, Cylon Battle Board. Um, my friends that I do play with that, that, you know, we've played with many times, we go back and forth on what's better, the Cylon battle board or the cards, because there's two different ways to play. <clears throat> I happen to like the Cylon battle board, um, a bit more. The cards are very hit and miss. Uh, basically the way the cards work is they would get shuffled into these, uh, destiny decks, which is this big deck here. And I have it split in half because we're going to have a lot of players. Um, but you would shuffle those in, and then when you draw them, the, uh, the, the Cylons will just, poof, they'll just appear around your ship. You know, they warp in, and then you have to battle them. Um, we've played whole games where those cards never come out, or they rarely come out. And then we've played games where every single time we draw, they're coming out. It's, I'm sure it's just a matter of shuffling and good shuffling, but it's just, it's a, it's a little wonky. And so, um... Uh, I find that this is a more consistent experience, and I also think it helps the Cylons to have an edge, because there's some pretty cool actions there that the Cylons get to do. Um, but what are we looking at here? First of all, we have the Galactica itself, which um, is here. I have the board turned sideways, uh, largely so people could breach whatever. But, um, but on the board, there's going to be various places that you can do actions. Uh, these yellow places, you don't want to be there. So those, you know, you don't want to be in the sick bay. You don't want to be in the brig. Um, but these are places where you get to do actions, and they all do a variety of things. We could spend all day talking about those. Um, so the Galactica itself is a place, and, and then, um, uh, you know, we're going to be, you know, you can, you can be flying around the outside of it. Uh, there are civilian ships that are being escorted by the Galactica, you know, and they could be on these different regions around the Galactica. Uh, they don't have to be in the rear. They could be anywhere. And um, and so that's the first part. The second part is, is you have Pegasus, which is an expansion. And it's also, uh, I don't know, what was it? Season 2, Season 3 of the show. And so Pegasus adds extra options, which are here. And um, uh, they're quite good. So um, these are just damage tokens for the Pegasus. As the Pegasus takes damage, you'll reveal. And then, of course, you know, you see that little symbol. Uh, gosh, I'm having real off right there. So that would mean the airlock is no longer available to be used until somebody repairs it. And if all four, you know, gets damaged, Pegasus gets destroyed. Um, same is true for the Galactica, which is what these are. So these are for every space on the Galactica. Um, we also have uh, up here our, our resources, so this is our population, our morale, our food, and our fuel. If, if any of these go to zero, the humans lose. Um, this is our jump tracker, so uh, we start preparing for jump, and then when we get to here, we can jump, but there's a risk, and then the risk gets lower, and then here is a safe jump. If we can go off the edge, and then it starts over. So the whole, what's the goal of the game? Before I continue. The goal of the game is to get to Earth, which is 10 jump spaces away. I don't know what the right word for that is, but um, let me show you up here. So you can see, if you get to 10, the next time the fleet jumps after you get to 10, the humans win. And it doesn't matter if you get to 11 or 12. The point is, is you got to at least hit 10. Okay, so what does, uh, so when you jump, the 
the Admiral will draw two of these cards, flip them over, and do whatever the text says. And the text is going to be bad, like lose a fuel, and but you get to repair two. Like this one's a mix, but this one moves two spaces out of the ten. This one only moves one space out of the ten. And um, you got to be really careful because uh, this is a game with a traitor element, and you could be a Cylon. And so if the Admiral is a Cylon, he's going to pick the one that only moves you one space, and then, you know, maybe causes you to lose four fuel, whereas the other one causes you to lose zero fuel, you know? So um, that's one of the clues you're going to have to figure out whether or not someone's a Cylon. And if the Admiral is a Cylon, uh, you're in trouble, because these... Um, these... Uh, these cards are very important to winning the game. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But the point is, though, is that's how you win. That's what the humans need to do to win. Um, obviously, there's a hundred ways for them to lose. But that's the primary way for them to win. Okay. So uh, if you ever are a Cylon and you reveal yourself as a Cylon or you get revealed because somebody catches you, um, this is the actions for the Cylons. And then these are the actions for the president. Uh, this is the president's ship. Um, it's not just for the president. Anybody can go there and do those actions, but they're very presidential oriented. And then there is the Demetrius, which also has actions and you can do missions. And then, uh, like I said, there's the Cylon uh, base itself. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, like I said, uh, need to get to home. That's a variant um, that we're playing. Uh, we need to um, not go to zero on these resources. And uh, how about the rest? How does the rest work? Well, every player gets to be one of these characters. And you can see there is quite a lot of them. Now, it is possible that you will die. So somebody can shoot, send you out the airlock, which is here. This is uh, an airlock action or somebody can just kill you, um, which is also a possibility. Um, if you die, you actually get to roll another character. So um, get to be uh, possibly more than one, although that's not a good thing, um, but still, it's, it's, there's a potential. Now, why did I set it up like this? Well, first of all, you have what's called the political leaders, which is on the left side. You have the military leaders in the middle, the pilots, which are in the third column, and then you have the support characters, okay? When we determine player order, we're going to, uh, the very first player gets to choose to pick first or pick last. I know that's a weird rule, but that's the rule. They get to pick first or last. And then uh, from there, um, every player gets to, obviously, whoever does pick first um, can pick from anybody. But let's say they pick a political leader. Then the next player cannot pick a political leader. They must pick one of these two or a support. Um, and basically, a political leader can't be picked again for a second time until somebody has taken at least one of these and one of these. Same is true if somebody were to take the military. You can't take another military until one of the other. So these three, there has to be at least one of each of these three taken before a second one can be taken. Now, the support leaders, uh, not so much. In fact, you could theoretically play a game with nothing but support players and, and not have these. Um, I don't know how that would work, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, I think there is some kind of rule on who gets what, but it would be very confusing and probably not good <laughs> for the humans. That would be an interesting game. Okay, so what's the point? Why are they broken up into the three categories? Well, that is because in the game, you have roles. Um, the president will go to very, it can be, anybody can be president, including the support players. Um, this pilot, Samuel Anders, can be a president. It's just that um, the game actually has a pecking order of who is first in line to be president. And then if they're killed, then, then this is the next in line to be president. So, um, it's, uh, there's a very specific order. And uh, rest assured, and you could safely assume, that the first in line for president is right there, Laura Raza, then Gaius Baltar, 
then Lee Adama. It's actually in this exact order. So that's how I set it up. So when my friends come over uh, and they're like, okay, if you're choosing your character, I put this in this order so they can understand that if they want to be president, they better take Laura because that's the only way to guarantee that no one else is going to beat them. But if somebody says, hey, I want to be Lee Adama, then somebody else is like, okay, I want to be president. And they know that they need to take one of these two to be able to be higher in the order. Okay. So whoever's highest in the yellow column will get president. The president will have quorum cards. And these quorum cards are cards that they can play on their turn um, that just have various actions on them and they do various things. Really hard to explain what they do and how they affect the game without understanding the rest of the game. Just understand that the president gets some pretty cool um, mechanic with the cards. Um, and they can actually give these cards to other players to help them. So you're very supportive and helpful and blah, blah, blah. Um, each character will have a special ability, a special miracle ability, which is usually a once per game kind of thing, but it could be more than once, possibly. Um, and then a uh, flaw, a character flaw. And then also you will see that they have these numbers, 311, yellow, green, purple. So uh, these pictures, these colors, uh, represent the different skill decks. So yellow being politics, green being leadership, and purple being tactics. So if you were Tory Foster, on your turn, you get to draw three yellow, um, one green, and one purple, because that's what it says here. So she's going to draw five cards on her turn, and it's going to be exactly those cards and those colors. So what do the card colors mean? What do the skills mean? Well, all the cards have text on them, and they vary. I mean, there's a whole bunch of varying text. And they can be actions. They can be things that give you huge bonuses. Um, they do tend to be in the realm of, you know, so, for example, the piloting ones are going to help you to destroy Cylons outside of the ship, you know. Engineering ones are going to be focused on repairing damage or repairing, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, fighter ships. And I, did, I know I, Vipers, that's the term I was trying to think of. The tactics is going to have a lot of cards that help you to manipulate die rolls because you're being tactical. The leadership ones, um, that one, uh, there's a very special card that everybody always looks for, and that's where you get to give commands to other people. So you actually get to give bonus actions to someone else. That's leadership. And then the politics one, it ranges. Um, but uh, there's some really good powerful cards in there as well uh, but you know it's more of a nature of like being able to get fuel or to be able to increase the morale of people you know stuff like that okay so um yes if you're asking this to yourself or you're saying this to the screen and i subliminally knew you were asking this question um it is a good game if you can make sure you have characters that have different all the colors covered. Um, so if you pick one that's very yellow and then these two, but but the thing is the game forces you, because remember how I said you need to have one of each? Well, this one's gonna be really high on politics because they're in the politic column. Well, you move over to the military leaders, they're gonna be really high on the green, which are the military columns, the green and the purple. And then you go over to the pilots and they're gonna be really high on the piloting. Now, the one thing you might be a little short on is engineering, but guess what? That's what the blue's for. <laughs> so um, you're going to have all the bases covered just by default. So don't waste your time coordinating with other players to figure that out. Okay, the next thing is um, you're going to need to... Uh, there's an admiral in the game. The admiral is the one who gets to draw these cards... And we sort of talked about that, that, you know, that's going to determine how quickly we can get home. And they're going to start with two of these three nuclear tokens. So they're going to be in charge of the nuclear weapons. And, and again, this game has traitors in it. And so therefore, it could be the Cylon player that has those nuclear weapons. And they could use it at the wrong moment. <laughs> um, but yes, that's the Admiral. And they're very powerful. You definitely want a good Admiral uh, player. Um, if you ask me, my favorite 
character to play is the Admiral. Um, now, it is possible you can get hosed. You can draw two cards that both only move you one space towards home, and then people are going to just automatically think you're, you're a Cylon when you're really not. You just had no choice. You drew two cards. You had to pick one. So um, you are absolutely not allowed to tell people what was on the other card. You are not allowed to even lie about what was on the other card. It's just forbidden in the game. There are certain things that are secret, and, and that's one of them. The, whatever you play, the players get to decide whether you're a Cylon or not based off of it, and you can't sit there and do this song and dance and say, well, I drew two ones, you know. Um, I mean, you can say that. I guess, you know, it's your game. Uh, but the, the rule book does recommend that you don't go into that. Um, I mean, you could say I drew two ones, or you could say this is the best I had. I mean, that's, that's all you can do. Um, but yes, if you're a human player and you just played a crappy card as the Admiral, you, de you tend to go down quick. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I get that's neither here nor there. Now, the uh, pilot has a CAG officer. So, um, you know, carrier group uh, command officer. And um, whoever has CAG is going to get to be able to do bonus actions uh, while they're outside of the ship in one of the Vipers. And the Vipers, by the way, there's three types. There's the regular Viper. There's the Viper Mark 7. We call those the Gucci Vipers. Um, now, the, um, these Vipers, if you remember the, the show, they were disabled because um, they had upgraded electronics, and of course that's what the Cylons infiltrated. Whereas the old Vipers were safe because they didn't have the uh, upgraded electronics. Um, so that's why you start the game with all those Gucci Vipers damaged. Um, they have to be repaired, and then once they're repaired, uh, then we can use them. So what's the difference between the two Vipers? Uh, this one is harder to kill, so basically it has better armor, and it moves two spaces instead of one, whereas this one only moves one space. And then we have um, the uh, Assault Raptor, which is a um, expansion item, and the Assault Raptor uh, is just as good as the Gucci Viper, so we tend to it sort of diminishes the value of these Gucci Vipers, uh, except it does not move two spaces, so that is one drawback. Uh, but the advantage of the Assault uh, Raptor is that um, whenever you jump, the Assault Raptor can jump with you. Uh, otherwise, if you're in one of the other Vipers, you have to always land back inside the ship uh, when you jump. So um, <clears throat> it costs you actions to, to load into a Viper and leave the ship, um, it doesn't cost you any actions to, to get back on, but, but to leave the ship and go back out and to fight, that costs you actions. Whereas with the uh, Assault Raptor, you don't have to spend those actions because you stay outside with the ship the moment it jumps. Um, <clears throat> now, some of that stuff will become more apparent as you play, but those are the things just to know. Now, on the, the Cylon side, they have, um, they have several things going on. Uh, they have they have the base star. They're gonna have this is a heavy assault, and then these are the normal assault. Um, so basically, these are like your fighters. Um, this one, if it gets to these two entrance bays for the Galactica, then it will um, unload cyborgs, basically a boarding party. And then that boarding party will start here, and if it ever progresses to here, the humans lose. So um, these are pretty nasty, uh, especially if you let the boarding party land. Um, they're really hard to get off afterwards, but um, uh, basically those are the, the, the three types of ships that the Cylons have. I don't think there's any other kind, um, but... Uh, there's so much detail there, it's not worth getting into super much. Um, like I said, we have a, a Destiny card deck. Uh, we're going to draw those at times. And let's talk more about the, the colors. Like, the various colors that players are going to have for cards. What's the point of the colors? And uh, if you are going to be playing this game, this is probably the most important thing to, to just understand. So I'm going to just draw one of these cards randomly. So this one says Temple of Five, right? There's some flavor text here. 
And then it says, in order to, it wants to, to get a test of nine, okay? In order, if you pass, meaning you get nine points of what? Nine points of purple and blue. That's the only way it passes, it's with purple and blue skills, okay? If you get nine points, the current player may draw two skill cards. If you fail, then you decrease the jump track by one, which means that uh, we're gonna be, it's gonna take longer before we can jump. This is a very bad fail. This is a meh pass, but it's a very bad fail. And you're gonna find a lot of cards like this where, cause you don't, you as a, a player, uh, it's a cooperative game with two traders. Um, you may not want to pass this because this might be too difficult. But here, let me explain what, what this means. So you see the purple and the blue. What that means is you have to have blue cards. So this blue three would add three points towards uh, that. And then of course, you know, these purple ones, that one would add one point towards it. And you would need nine points. But here's what happens. First of all, there's gonna be two random cards added to it that didn't get added by anybody. It's just the game adds two random cards. And I'll talk about that in a second a little bit more. But those are gonna be in the mix. So you have to overcome whatever those two cards do. And sometimes they help you. But, uh, so what, they, what happens then is, let's say I'm the player. And I get this, uh, and I say, okay, let's try for it, guys, right? I wanna pass this. So then starting to the player to my left, and then going clockwise, Everybody decides if they're going to add cards from their hand to help support this. Now remember, you only get new cards when it's your turn. So if you're playing a six player game like we're planning on playing, or I think we're actually gonna have a seven player game, uh, if you blow all your cards in one action, I mean, you gotta wait through five, six other players to take their turn before you're ever gonna get your card, any new cards back in your hand. So you gotta be careful. Sometimes you don't wanna blow all your cards, uh, but sometimes you really need to pass a test because that's important for the game. And then of course, uh, people are gonna think you're a traitor. You, got, you have to worry about that. So uh, it starts with the player on my left. Um, before we start, I could say uh, high, middle, or low. That's all you can ask people to say. Are you planning on helping? Yes, high, middle, or low. And what does middle even mean? I mean, that's the other part. Um, but we don't get to define that. We don't, you know, uh, but somebody could say, I'm gonna help and I'm gonna help a lot. You know, they're allowed to do that. What they're not allowed to say is what number they have, okay? That's forbidden. But they can say, yeah, I'm gonna help you know, just a little. I'm gonna help a lot. Or I can't help. I'm not gonna be able to help with this. So you can get like a consensus. But then, yes, starting the player to the left, they can add cards to this or they could pass. And then it keeps going. Add cards or pass, add cards or pass. So then it'll get back to me. And I'll see that there were six cards already added to the pot. And I can even ask the players, hey, I see six cards are here. Do I need to, to help with this or can I let it go? And some people may say, I think we got this. You know, it could be the Cylon lying to you. That's the part about this game that's a total mind warp. But uh, once... All the cards are in, so we'll have like a whole bunch of these cards that were added to a pool. So then, me as a player, I have to bring them together and shuffle them, because I'm not allowed to know which cards came from which players. And remember, two of these cards came from nobody. It came from the game itself. So we had to, you know, get those added. And it's called the Destiny deck. So the Destiny deck, uh, at the start of the game, is two of every color including this treachery deck, which I haven't talked about yet. Um, so it's gonna be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 cards. And so those 12 cards are gonna be shuffled. And then once that stack runs out, then we get 12 more cards and we just keep repeating. But um, if you're you know, playing, if you're a good blackjack or whatever player and you like to count cards, you might be able to count what came out of the destiny deck. Because here's, here's the, the magic of this game. We, I shuffle those cards and I reveal. And then I'm like, okay, here's two in favor. Here's three more in favor. Here's three more in favor. Hey, we're gonna win. And then I get a minus four, and then a minus four, and then a minus five. Okay, what did we just learn from that? 
I had three negative cards towards this nine. Well, the Destiny deck only added two. So we know that one of the players who actually played was a cheat to use a Cylon, okay? That's one of the clues you can get out of it. The second one is, uh, what if only two of them were bad? Well, it's possible that there were two Cylons, or one Cylon, right, because he added two cards. So it's possible the Cylons are still sabotaging us, and the Destiny deck actually gave us good cards. That's where you get a little screwed up sometimes, but, but let's say that those two bad cards were both blue. <clears throat> well, uh, that means if they both came from the Destiny deck, the Destiny deck only has two blue in it. We know that because it's two of every color. So if there's ever another bad blue, then we know it was not the Destiny deck that's screwing us over. And so those are the things you mentally keep track of. Those are the things that you mentally look for as clues because now you know, hey, hold on a second. When we did this test, three people passed, so they can't be the Cylon. So it's only one of those four people that were left. They're the Cylons. And so you start to get, you know, your deductive skills going. And um, so these tests that you do are really revealing in terms of who's really trying to help and who's not. Okay? Um, there's so much into this. Now, uh, what's the play sequence? Well, when it's your turn, you get to do one move, one action, and then you draw one of these cards. So that's it. Now, sometimes it can take a while to do those things, but um, if you have veteran players, you can go through it pretty quickly. Um, the thing that takes the longest is we draw one of these cards, and then we have to do this. And then this interaction right here could take, you know, 10 minutes um, or even longer. And so... Um, if, I, if you talk to anybody who loves or hates this game, it's going to boil down to whether you love or hate this mechanic. Um, this mechanic here sort of is the driving force behind discovering who the traders are and who they aren't. Um, okay, so, but there's other things too. Like, this is the, the Cylon's turn, right? So this is special symbology on what happens when the Cylons go. Okay, so there's, there's Cylon players, but that doesn't... When, they're, when they haven't revealed themselves... They're pretending to be humans, and they're playing as humans. So uh, they don't do anything on the Cylon's turn. The Cylon's turn is a, it's the game, the game itself. Think Pandemic or whatever. The Cylon's are going to be doing some stuff to us, and that's what these symbols are, okay? And then um, eventually, like, you get this symbol on the right, and that's a prepare for jump. So remember I said we need to jump to get to home. Well, this is a good card for the humans, so... Uh, it moves the jump marker one space. These ones do not. So those are very bad. Okay, so lots of stuff going on there. Now, um, let me back up a little and talk how do players know if they're a Cylon or not? And how is that mechanic determined? Um, so at the start of the game, uh, so I'm doing a seven-player game on Wednesday. And let me see if I can pull up this little chart for you because it the chart really explains it better than I ever could and of course I'm not finding it there we go so they got this little chart based on number of players I don't recommend a three-player game I think that could be really dry but four is okay but five and six are the magic numbers and then seven is fun um, I have some friends that don't like seven because it has this Cylon leader concept, but I think it's great. Um, okay, so in a seven player game, there's gonna be two for sure Cylons added to a deck. That doesn't mean there's gonna be two Cylons in the game. Uh, if you ever played Shadows Over Camelot, it's a similar mechanic. And then there's gonna be 10 you're not a Cylon cards. And then there's gonna be this thing called the Mutineer, which we haven't talked about yet. So there's gonna be 13 cards in this deck for a seven player game. Now we're gonna add one more because we're using the Exodus expansion. And then based on if a player chooses Gaius or if a player chooses Boomer, um, there's possibility of extra cards being added. But we figure that out whenever the players make their choices. Now, uh, what does the loyalty deck look like? Well, remember I have all the expansions, so it's a little complicated, but basically you're gonna have um, these are the you are a Cylon cards. So um, everybody's going to get 
So once we you know, make our deck, according to those rules I just showed you, everybody's gonna get one of these secretly at the start of the game. So if I were to get this one, for example, it would say you are a Cylon, so I know I'm a Cylon from day one, okay? Um, this is my ability. Um, if I'm not in the brig, I can reveal myself. I can basically, you know, I'm waiting for my moment to strike and then I can reduce the prep track by two, okay, when I do that. I can do that on turn one if I want. I'm not sure it's, uh, you know, there's a lot, this is a big debate on when do you reveal yourself. Um, I think it helps to play as a human for a while and maybe sabotage things a little bit. And then once people are starting to suspect you, then you, you know, reveal yourself. But if they ever suspect you enough to put you in the brig, uh, you're not allowed to reveal yourself anymore with this card. You're stuck. You gotta convince the players to get you out of the brig, and that can be really challenging. So, this is you are a Cylon, and these are all you are a Cylon. And they all have different, you know, things that happen when you reveal yourself. Okay, so, um, again, now what happens when you reveal yourself? Well, then you get, you basically, you kill yourself, right? Because Cylons resurrect in the resurrection ship. So they'll resurrect here in Caprica on the resurrection ship. And then for the rest of the game, they'll be able to do actions here or uh, because of this expansion, they'll be able to do actions there. So there's two places for them to do actions. Uh, they can do this thing called infiltrate, which I'm not gonna talk about yet, but that's basically they come back to the Galactica as a human. But we're not gonna do that yet or talk about that. Now the you're not a Cylon, Okay, this one is a lot more complicated because there's three types of You're Not a Cylon cards. So this is the one that came with the base game and it's just exactly what it says, You're Not a Cylon. This one is an expansion thing, which is pretty cool. You're not a Cylon, but you have a personal goal. So basically you're not a Cylon, but you're a human dick. Um, so uh, here you wanna make sure the Admiral has no remaining nuke tokens. And if that happens, you reveal this card. Uh, then, if distance is six or less, shuffle one You're Not a Cylon card into the loyalty deck and draw a new loyalty card. If you're a human player and this card has not been revealed by the end of the game, uh, you lose. I'm sorry, you lose uh, uh, morale. This, that's what this... So one morale is going to be lost. So let's say the humans win, but morale was down to just one, right? And uh, remember, if anything goes to zero, the humans lose. So if he, the human fails to resolve this, then um, one morale gets taken off at the end of the game. And this is one of those secret things where you're not allowed to tell anybody. <laughs> so if you fail your personal goal, the humans suffer. And if this causes that to go to zero, the humans thought they won, but they really didn't. So the personal goal can really punish you at the end. Then there's the third type, which is you're not a Cylon, you're actually one of the final five. So technically you are a Cylon, but you're the final five. And if you've never watched the show, this isn't gonna make any sense to you, but, but basically in the show, the final five were like basically the five Cylon, uh, think of them as gods or super creators. They created all the Cylon race, but then they, they made it so they became human and then they didn't know that they were a Cylon anymore. They actually thought they were human. And so um, on the show, uh, those final five, uh, some of them, once they realized they really were a Cylon, decided, you know what, I'm still gonna be a human. And so they sided with the humans anyways. Um, the, you know, and then some of them, of course, wanted to embrace being a Cylon and they wanted to sabotage and destroy the humans. Now, what does this mean? Um, so for now, you're not a Cylon because you're part of the final five. But if you were to ever reveal another one of these, you are a Cylon, then thematically, it just means that you're a final five, but you sided with the Cylons. But um, uh, if this is all you have, um, then you're not a Cylon. Okay, for the purposes of traitor mechanic. Uh, you are a Cylon, but you're not a traitor. How about that? Okay, so now what's cool about these? Well, 
there are times in the game when someone can reveal your card or it, they get to look at your card. They don't, you know, get to reveal it to the whole group. But basically it says, if this card is examined, you are executed. So if I'm using my special ability to look at someone else's loyalty card, because I want to know, are you a Cylon? And if I were to look at this person's loyalty card, they get killed. <laughs> That's, this game doesn't mess around. Their character gets killed. And so they have to they they have to immediately draw and get another character created, and the humans lose morale and everything when a if so if that character that was looking at my loyalty card was a human, then all the humans take a morale hit. Now if it was a Cylon, that's like awesome, because then the Cylon uh, gets killed, and they have to of course go to the resurrection ship, and then. Um, it says, if this card is revealed as a result of execution, all players lose two skill cards. So it basically just kills all the human players. Um, if it's examined by another player, uh, it's immediately revealed you are executed and all other players must discard two. So this is a very bad... <laughs> these, these final five ones are awesome. This is another one that executes. Like So when you reveal people's... Um, and here, uh, the Galactica gets damaged twice. So there's, um, uh, whoever examined this card is sent to jail. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, some people don't like this, but I, I really love those aspects of this game. So anyways, um, uh, we're going to make a deck of these. Now, when I have to draw your not a Cylon cards into the deck, I'm shuffling this whole thing. And like in a seven player game, I'm taking 10 of these and making a loyalty deck. If I make 10 of these, I may not get any of them with personal gold just because of the randomness of the, of the deck. Uh, but as you can see here, one, two, right? Two normal vanilla ones. There's a third, there's a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. So by drawing 10 cards, I would not have had any of the final five in this game. Now, the 11th one was the final five, and because we're playing with Exodus, I would have drawn an 11th one. So those would have been part of the loyalty deck. Okay, so I know I went into a lot of detail in this, but it's important, because here's the deal. We're gonna have 11 cards minimum in a seven player game uh, doing the loyalty deck, okay? So seven of those 11 cards get handed out to everybody. Well, actually, I'm sorry, we're going to have 11, uh, you're loyal, plus 2, you are a Cylon, so that's 13, right? So we're going to have 13 cards, and then we're also going to have this Mutineer card, which I haven't discussed yet. Those will all be in the loyalty deck. Everybody gets one. So um, that, at the start of the game, is going to tell you whether you're human or Cylon. Now, remember how I told you that when we do a jump... The Admiral reveals those cards, and then, you know, we move a certain distance, and we have to move 10 to get to home. Well, uh, if you noticed, Earth has a sleeper phase at 4. Okay, so what does 4 mean? Well, if you watch the show, the Cylons had sleepers, meaning that they thought they were humans, but then when the Cylon command ship decided to wake them up, they would send a signal to them, and then they would all of a sudden realize what they are. They would realize they're a Cylon, and then they would immediately start to sabotage the ship. So we start the game with one card, but then in the sleeper phase, one more card gets dished out to everybody. So now everybody gets two. And you might be thinking, okay, you just said that there was 13 cards in the deck, but there's seven players. One of them's a Cylon leader, which I haven't explained yet. So we're only giving out six cards in the beginning, and then six more in a sleeper phase. So one of the 13 cards is never going to be revealed. And so it is possible by some awful luck that there's only going to be one Cylon in the game instead of two. Um, but that's part of what makes the game cool. And like I said, it's uh, you can't even like be certain that there's going to be two Cylons in the game. And that's what makes the game even more fun. Because when somebody catches the one Cylon, and then they start accusing each other of being the other one, but they're all humans. <laughs> oh, that's when the game gets great. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a uh, couple of things. 
the sleeper phase, if you draw a you are a Cylon during that phase, it doesn't matter what the other one says, you're now a Cylon. Um, so you may have a loyalty card and a Cylon card, and um, it doesn't matter. Now, there is a chance that you're going to draw both of the you are a Cylon cards. Um, now, if that happens, one of the mechanics in this game is when you reveal that you're a Cylon. Obviously, you're going to have to play the rest of the game in the Cylon side of the, sh of the game. But when you reveal that you're a Cylon, you get to take your other loyalty card, if you have any, and just give them to a player of your choice. So when you do that, you can actually make another player become a Cylon with you. Um, now, they're not going to know. I'm sorry, they're going to know because they get to see it. But the rest of the players don't. And so they're going to think you just handed over some loyalty card that just says you're not a Cylon. But there is a chance that if you had both of them, that you can actually pick who your teammate is. And um, uh, that can make for an interesting game. Okay, so um, these tokens here are just used for your miracle tokens. You get this like once in a game, you know, miracle thing you get to do. Uh, the reason we have tokens now, uh, it, it's so hard to explain, but every one of these characters have special abilities. Some of them have the ability to steal these tokens from you, um, Gaius Baltar, actually, um, and then uh, do and manipulate these. And, and then he can actually give them out to people like Candy. Um, uh, he's a very interesting character, and if he ever is the Cylon, it makes for an interesting game. Okay, what is the Mutineer? The Mutineer is basically, um, it's him, this is Eric. Uh, so, the Mutineer is basically somebody who thinks that he can run the sh ship better than whoever is running it, thinks he can be a better president than whoever is being the president. Um, and so the way the mechanic works in this game is there's actually a Mutineer deck of cards, and the Mutineer gets to draw from that deck, but so does everybody else, because he's trying to get other people to mutiny with him. And so, but the thing is, is if you get too many Mutineer cards in your hand, you automatically go to the brig, which is jail. And um, that's the interesting mechanic that he adds to the game. And the Mutineer uh, card is not a loyalty card. It's just shuffled into the loyalty deck. And then if somebody were to draw this, they actually reveal it right away, they announce it, and then they just draw another loyalty card and look at that. Okay, so one last thing about these cards. Um, the uh, You Are a Cylon card has text, and you may want to read that text and understand it, because you don't want to be looking at your loyalty card all the time. The You're Not a Cylon card was literally, boom, you're not a Cylon with some flavor and that's it. So one of the things with this game, especially when you're playing against people who know what they're doing, is they say, okay, let's look at our loyalty cards, and you see somebody pick up their loyalty card, look at it, and then put it right back down in, in a split second. You just revealed to everybody that you're not a Cylon when you did that. Now, you could just try to be super snarky and, and you'll read it later, but um, uh, so I do recommend that you ask everybody to hold it up, look at it, and then for a given period of time, let everybody read it, and then tell everybody to put it down together. Uh, it just helps, so that way uh, people aren't like, oh, Okay, and, and then, you know, given some kind of clue that they're not a Cylon. Um, the, the, the beauty of this game is not knowing who the Cylon is and truly trying to figure that out. Um, this is a social deduction game masked behind all kinds of really cool mechanics. And then if you ever watch the show, it is so bleeding with thematics, it's not even funny. Okay, so um, like I said, when it's, when it's your turn, you do a move. You do an action, and then you draw one of those cards. So let's do a sample turn. So if I were um, a particular character, I don't even have all the character stands out. Uh, let's say I'm here in the armory. I could move to anywhere on the Galactica. It's not, you know, a one space thing. I can go anywhere on the Galactica um, as my move. I can even launch at the hangar deck into a Viper and come out here as part of my move, okay? Um, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, that, that's an action. That, that would be the action. 
um, but I can move here and then do the action which launches me into a Viper. So that's a, a common thing. I can move from the Galactica to the President ship, to the Pegasus, and to Demetrius. Why would I do that? Well, um, because there's certain actions on each one that are valuable, but one of the things that, that's in the mechanics is in order to move from one ship to another, I have to discard one of my skill cards. Remember, you're, you're, you only have so many in your hand, and then you have to discard one. So it's, it's a pretty precious thing. You don't want to be moving too much between ships, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Okay, there's a hand limit of 10 cards, so you can't hoard a bunch of these skill cards in your hand if for some reason you have a bunch. So at some point, you can go over 10 during your turn, but by the time your turn ends, you have to discard down to 10. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully it does. Um, so like, what are some of the actions? What are some of the things? Like, why would I go here versus there? You know, what could be going on? Well, um, the first thing is, is that there could be Cylons out in space surrounding your ship. And so you could get, if you're a pilot, you would get in and try to actually fight these ships. That's one of the options. Another option is you can go to the command, okay? And the command here says, as an action, you can activate two unmanned vipers. So basically, these are just a bunch of non-player characters, and you can actually command them to launch and then go out and fight for you. Um, and you get to command them from inside, okay? That's one of the things you get to do. You can go to weapons control, and you can attack a Cylon ship with Galactica. So that's just a die roll. There's a big chart on the, uh, the back of the rule book that tells you if you roll this, you hit. If you roll that, like um, in order to hit a raider, you need a three to an eight on an eight-sided die. To be able to hit the base star, but with a Viper, you need a perfect eight roll. With an Assault Wrapper, you can do it with a seven or eight. And with Galactica itself, it's a five to eight, which this is Galactica right here. Okay, so um, those are our options. But then the Pegasus is the command ship, right? That's the, basically the main mothership. And the Pegasus has some pretty cool actions. Let me see if I can get some zoomed in here. Um, the CIC, you choose a base star and roll uh, one to three damages the Pegasus, four to six damages the base star. Yes, you read that correctly. You can damage yourself or you can damage the base star twice. So the Pegasus has like really good weaponry for taking out the big Cylon ships, whereas the, the Galactica does not. Um, it's better suited at taking out the smaller ships. Um, the, uh, there's other actions as well. For example, the airlock here, you can basically choose a character and you actually would do a 12 test, right? And with the 12 test, you can send someone out the airlock and, um, and you kill them, basically. Um, so you, that's a way to eliminate another uh, player. And, and why, why would you want to kill people? Well, first of all, if you kill them, they have to reveal their loyalty card. Um, and uh, they could be a Cylon, and so you basically did everybody a favor. But if you end up killing another human, you cause them to lose morale. Now, if you are a Cylon, you want to kill the human. So um, making them lose morale and making them have to get a new character, boy, that sounds great. <laughs> so those are all options, okay? Um, there's, there's also main batteries on here, and there's an engine room that will let you um, uh, prepare for jump automatically, no matter what the card says on the Destiny deck. Now, <clears throat> there's another reason why you want to kill people. So let's say uh, Adama's the pilot and somebody else wants to be the CAG officer. You know, so basically uh, um, Starbuck wants to be the CAG officer. So if Starbuck can figure out a way to kill Adama, uh, that's not very thematic, by the way, but but if, if she could, then um, she actually gets to take the CAG officer role. The other thing is, is, if you go to the brig, you lose your role. So if the Admiral ever gets arrested and goes to the brig, um, whoever's next in line takes over the Admiral role. So the uh, roles at the start of the game aren't secure. You could lose the presidency, you can lose everything. 
So um, that's just a sampling of some of the stuff you can do. Now, what's this ship over here do? Well, it's got a really nice action, what we call the candy action, where you can choose a skill card and all the players get to draw a card. Um, so this is a nice way to get skill cards in everybody's hands. Um, and then these here are missions that you can do, and they're like uh, bonus checks. So you can do tests and you need cards, of course, to do it. But let's say you pass. Well, some of these, they give you like really huge advantages in a game, and this one actually moves you two spaces towards home. So, but you can see they're mega checks, like you have to get a 25 to pass. But it's all the colors but one. Um, but yeah, you can actually move two spaces towards home. So some of these are really helpful that way. This one um, will destroy all the base stars um, that are in the game. And well, temporarily, of course. But, um, but that's the thing with these. These are special missions. Uh, so you get that's what this little thing does. And there's a couple other... Um, they basically all manipulate the mission deck. So this lets you look at the mission deck and place the card on a top or bottom because sometimes you want a particular card out of here. You don't want the one that kills the base stars. You want something else. Uh, this will let you spend an action to manipulate this deck. Um, this one here uh, will reveal the mission. And then, of course, you go here to actually do the mission. Um, so, uh, and then the, the President one has a whole bunch of actions that that basically manipulate the quorum cards. They don't all do that, but most of them do. And so usually only the president is up there, you know, meandering around because there's those are things that all help the president to do, you know, with their quorum cards, etc. Okay, so I move, I do my action, I draw a destiny card. So we we looked at this already. I get a food shortage, and this is what's interesting. It's my turn, but it says the president chooses. So if I'm not the president, I have to hand this card to the president, and then they choose, are we gonna lose two food, or are we gonna lose one food, and then the president has to lose two of their skill cards. And then the current player, which is me, I have to lose three cards. So we're gonna lose five skill cards just to be able to reduce the amount of food we lose by one. And this is a choice the president has to make. And this is a choice between evil and evil. <laughs> bad and bad. Um, so you get to choose which bad you're going to choose. And, of course, the president, if they're a Cylon, may choose to do the minus two food and not want to do this because they want the players to lose. Um, and then, of course, like I said, the game gets to go. And then this means we get to prep for jump. So we do get something positive out of it. But that would be an entire turn. So um, I moved, I took an action, and I did a destiny deck. Now that of course would have been a test where we would have had to go around just like I explained. Um, so we keep doing this over and over again until the game ends. Now the Cylons, once they reveal who they are, they have special actions they get to do. That's probably easier to talk about once it actually happens. But basically, um, uh, the Cylons are always trying to find us. And they're, you know, we jump, you know, we hyper jump away, and then we're safe, right? We're, we're in pristine, calm space. Well, then the Cylons figure out where we are, and then they jump, and they show up all around us, and then we do battle until we can jump again, right? Well, while the Cylons are trying to find us, they prepare their fleets here. And so, see how this is in the back? So you got this, these blue lines and there's this section in the back. Whatever ships are here, when they find us, they're gonna jump here. Same, so it, see it's the same layout as the Galactica. So wherever the ships were over there, that's where they're gonna show up on the Galactica. And we as players get to see that. We know that there's gonna be three ships that are gonna jump here. And so why is that important? These are civilian ships. And so if I have two civilian ships in the rear of the Galactica and they have a whole bunch of raiders that are gonna just go there, I may wanna make sure my Vipers are here to protect these civilian ships, or I may wanna move the civilian ships away from, uh, from there. So uh, 
what else is important about this? Why are the civilian ships? Well, if you destroy a civilian ship, then bad things happen. So what this says is that uh, you're going to lose a population. So population is going to go down. And this one, actually, nothing bad happens. Um, but uh, there's you know varying uh, degrees. I think the worst one is two population loss. But um, one of these, I think, is a fuel ship. So you'll lose some fuel. Um, they can be pretty bad. And if you end up losing all of them, chances are high you're not going to win the game as a human. Um, so you need to protect the civilian ships, and that's where the pilots are really come in handy. Um, now, the uh, Cylon player has actions here, and I know there's a glare. It's a little annoying, actually. But the um, they get to basically do two of those four actions. They can't do the same action twice. They just get to do two. And so they can make the CAG um, so it says the CAG must place one civilian ship, right? So they can force the CAG to put a civilian ship out on the board. Um, they can place a base star or three raiders on any one area on this game board. So they're prepping, right? They can roll a die. And so when, when, does the, when do they find you? Well, they find you when this little marker here moves over and then boom, they attack. So what makes this marker move? Well, it's the same Destiny deck. So this says place a raider, right? So the raider is going to get placed here, and then the marker moves by one. So anytime new stuff gets placed here by these cards, that marker moves by one. Well, you can actually try to make it move on your turn an additional time, but it's based on what this is a luck of the die roll kind of thing. And then over here... Um, you can do some damage to Galactica, but it, it requires there to be a whole heck of a lot of raiders on the board. Um, and, uh, and of course, the Galactica is going to be working hard to kill those raiders and destroy them. So that's um, uh, a lot of what that does. And then here, there's various actions. I can pick this up and show it to the camera. The resurrection ship is where you go after you died. So you don't want to stay here. Um, but you can go here to draw what's called a super crisis card. So it's just like the, um, the destiny cards that you draw at the end of your turn, except none of them are good for you, <laughs> the humans. <laughs> so basically, it forces the humans to pass some mega test in order to avoid a catastrophic loss. Um, so the Super Crisis cards are very nasty, or they can be, um, and you can play them on the players. This Infiltrate Galactica uh, allows you to go back to the Galactica as a human again, and uh, but the problem is that the players know who you are. So you're not going to get away with too much, but this is more helpful when you're the Cylon Leader, which I haven't talked about yet. The Cylon Leader is who our seventh player is going to be, and the Cylon leader is a Cylon from the start. Everybody knows they're a Cylon. However, they're going to get these cards, and the cards are going to tell them, uh, do you uh, favor the humans or do you favor the Cylons? So the Cylon leaders uh, may eventually uh, have sympathy and, and join the side of the humans. So basically, you're a neutral character, even though you're a Cylon from the start. Um, and uh, the infiltrate works really well for them because everybody knows they're a Cylon and nobody even knows if they're on your side or not. They're sort of like riding the fence. Now, um, how does that mechanic work? Like, what do you do if you're one of them? Well, at the start of the game, you're gonna get two of these. So let's say I had these two. This doesn't help me. I can be allied to the humans or I can be allied to the Cylons. However, you have to reveal the cards in order to win the game. So reveal this card if another player is in the brig and you have a mutiny card. That is necessary for you to reveal this card. Once you reveal it, then everybody's going to know you have an allegiance human. They may not know what this one says, but they at least know this one. So that revealed to everybody a little bit of your puzzle, right? But during the sleeper phase, you actually draw two more. So these two, 
now you can see we have three human and one Cylon. The other players don't know, but you do. And this is one of those secret things you can't tell people. Um, now, some of this is reveal this card if the game is over and food is two or more. So you can't reveal this until the game ends. Okay? Um, that's uh, really brutal for the other players or possibly for you. Now, here's the thing. As a Cylon leader, you can only win if three of your four cards get revealed. So here, the condition is that the food has to be two or more. If there's less than two food, you can't reveal this card. And if you have several cards like this, you can't win the game, no matter what you do. So you may be on the side of the humans, but you need this card to be revealed because you need three of your four cards to be revealed. And in this case, you're clearly going to be human because you have more humans than, than Cylon, right? So it's just whatever you have the most of. And by the way, if you reveal all four and they're split, even tie, then you win no matter what. So that's just thought in case you were wondering. But you desperately need this done. So you may be desperately trying to make, uh, make decisions that won't let the Galactica lose food. And everybody might be saying to you, why? We have plenty of food. We only need one food to win the game. And you may not be allowing that to happen because <laughs> you're desperately trying to be able to play this card. So uh, the Cylon leader uh, does get put in a bit of a RNG because you're at the mercy of the cards you draw and what these cards make you do. Um, and then your loyalty is based on those cards. So here, let's say we drew these two. You're a Cylon or human, right? So you don't know. And so now we're going to draw two more. Uh, human and Cylon. There you go. We got four, um, four cards. Two of them say human. Two of them say Cylon. And what on earth does this mean? Well, I got to play three of them in order to qualify to win the game. Well, if I play these three, I'm going to be rooting for the Cylons. If I play these three, I'm going to be rooting for the humans. So that's the first factor you have control of. If I play all four, it doesn't matter who wins. I win no matter what. Okay? So I'm probably going to want to play all four. But this one requires you to get to the game is over and morale is at three or more. So um, reveal this if the game is over and seven or more distance has been traveled. Um, game is over and morale is five or less. Reveal this if the game is over and at least four vipers are damaged or destroyed. So I can't reveal any of these cards until the game is over. That's crazy. But you need to have all four of these conditions met or otherwise um, you can't guarantee you're going to win. So uh, anyways, that's uh, how the Cylon leaders work. And they have their own um, ability and then miraculous ability and then, of course, uh, a vice. Um, like one of these characters is a drug addict, for example. Um, and uh, the, the big thing is, is that when you are a Cylon, you still draw and use skill cards, but you don't get as many. And uh, when you're a human player or pretending to be a human player, you can throw as many cards as you want into a skill check. So you can really sabotage something if you really wanted to. But once you're a Cylon player, you still get to throw cards into the skill check, um, but not as many. Yeah, um, I think I'd have to look it up. I think it's just one that you could throw in. And also the, the number of cards you draw on your turn is really low. So you don't get as much uh, ability to manipulate the skill checks uh, when you're a Cylon as you would if you were a Cylon pretending to be a human. So when you're a Cylon that hasn't revealed yourself yet, you can really muck things up. Once you've revealed yourself as a Cylon, you can still sort of muck things up, but uh, your big power and advantage is you're gonna try to get those Cylon ships to destroy Galactica or, you know, get those Super Crisis cards and force the players to have to deal with a Super Crisis. That's what you wanna do once you reveal yourself. And some people will reveal themselves on turn one and uh, off they go. But like I said, I think you lose a big advantage of uh, surprise. Surprising the humans and sabotaging them right at the moment that they least needed it or wanted it is a very joyous and uh, pleasing thing. And then, of course, this guy 
you're trying to get objectives done, objectives you can't share with the other players, and so you're looking like all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can look like you're not with the humans, you can look like you're with the humans, but really all you're trying to do is make it so you can reveal your cards. And so um, uh, it makes for a very chaotic uh, but enjoyable game. All right, I know I uh, went through a lot here. Um, I think uh, the last thing maybe to talk about uh, before I wrap it up, yes, I, I have this board turned over. That is a, um, a base star board, and it gets revealed through one of these cards, I think. Um, you can actually make the base star, and it becomes a part of the game. So this base star has even more actions available to you. Um, and then the base star's loyalty can be to the Cylons or to the humans. So it all depends on uh, whether or not you pass the test for the mission. Okay, um, one last thought, and that's on characters. So I'm just going to go over some of the ones that I personally enjoy. Um, Laura Roslin as the president is awesome. You can't go wrong with her. She has an ability that when you draw crisis cards, she gets to draw two and pick which one to keep. And so that's these cards. So why is that important? Well, if you draw two and pick which one to keep, you could pick one that, you know, this one might be bad for us, whereas this one's not so bad, right? That's the first thing. And then the other thing is, is you're looking for these jump tokens. Jumping is how humans win. You want to jump. So if one of these had this symbol, but the other one didn't, then Laura Roslin gets to pick the one that has the symbol. Unless she's a Cylon, then she's intentionally picking the one that does not have the symbol. So when you're looking at President Roslin there, and she's consistently never revealing a jump token, you might want to execute her. <laughs> um... Very interesting, very fun, but she has a very bad weakness. And in order to activate a location, you have to discard two cards. So uh, basically, you, she never wants to do an action. Because if you activate an actual location, she has to... So that's why she's really helpful, because when she uses quorum cards, she's playing those quorum cards, but that's not activating a location. So, um, so she does actions through her quorum cards. And so uh, when you play as her, you're, you're going to have a very different game than most other people. Now, these other ones uh, have really good uh, abilities. Um, like I said, it depends. Gaius Baltar, people pick him a lot. What Gaius does is he draws two loyalty cards at the beginning of the game. So you actually shuffle in one more loyalty card over there. So he has a higher chance of actually being a Cylon. Um, as you may know from the show, he really wasn't a Cylon, but he sort of wanted to be, and he was like a sympathizer. So, um, or everybody suspected that he was. And so, with him having two loyalty cards at the start of the game, the chances of him being Cylon are higher. And so, um, uh, people will suspect or have suspicions about him from the start. Now, what, why, why is that helpful? Well, after you draw a crisis card, he gets to draw any skill card of his choice. So he's always adding more cards to his hand. Um, that's a really powerful ability for the, um, for the negative that comes with it. Another really uh, interesting one here, uh, well, there's two. Ellen Tai, she's actually one of the final five on the show. Um, she draws treachery cards in her deck and she does all kinds of tre treachery stuff. And so she's really interesting to play. Um, it drives other player nuts because she's throwing treachery cards in and out. Um, but she actually has the ability uh, to, when she ends her movement step in the same location as another player, she can give that player a skill card from her hand in order to draw two more. So she can actually give them a treachery card, and then she gets to draw two cards of her own. Um, it's, a, it's just fun to play. <laughs> Whether you're a Cylon or not, you're, you can really... You can muck things up, or you can even help quite a bit. Okay, Robo Lampkin is a favorite of my friends who plays this. Um, when a crisis card requires you to discard skill cards, 
you reduce the amount of cards you discard by one, which is okay. But um, if you enter movement in a location with another player, you must discard two skill cards. If you cannot, you are sent to the brig. So that's a very bad one. So basically, he doesn't want to be with other people. Um, but once per game, uh, move a character in the brig in location on Galactica. If he belongs to another player, take all of their skill cards. So he's just very interesting from that perspective that you can really... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he gets to take people out of jail. So if somebody's in the brig, he can just take them out of the brig, um, but he gets to take all their cards. So um, it's an interesting one to play. I'll just leave it at that. Um, now, there are, uh, you also notice that Leah Dama has a political side because he was a president in the show. And then he's also here. So if a player picks the pilot Leah Dama, this one gets removed from the game. So you can't have both of them in the game. I mean, it's just not right. But, uh, but there's two choices. So you could pick the political Liadama, or you could pick the pilot Liadama, and they both have completely different skills and abilities. Okay, I didn't mean to take up so much time on this, but um, to continue to cover the interesting ones, Helen Kane is one of my favorite characters. Actually, my two favorite characters are these two. <laughs> And so, like I told you, I like to play the military. Um, Helena Kane is awesome. She has an ability to just kill people. Um, when an Admiral's Quarter skill check is passed with 10 or more, you may choose to execute that character instead of sending them to the brig. So that's awesome. But the one reason I like her is uh, she's not allowed to activate the FTL controller engine room Okay, that's not why I like her, but once per game, if you're at a distance of six or less, you can just jump. And so um, if you're a human player and you want to win, the, the way you win is to jump. And so uh, if you use her ability, you can get a, a jump in when all the players are not expecting it because, you know, we're just mechanically the game. She actually gets to break the game mechanics and jump even when you can't jump. And it's called a blind jump. And um, if you're a human player, it's awesome. Because now you're, you're, you're doing a blind jump. It causes population to possibly die. There's a chance. Um, but then you get to draw two cards and move closer to home. It's really, really powerful if you're human. <laughs> if you're not human, then you're trying to blind jump to get people killed. But that's a different story. Now, Adama uh, just is a solid um, character. When you draw a crisis card, all one strength cards count as positive. So um, uh, all that means is, remember, you needed like certain colors to pass. If somebody plays a different color, but it's a one strength, it has, it has a strength of one, it counts as a benefit. So uh, he's really good that way. And uh, he gets to uh, once per game when he resolves a skill check, instead of discarding the used skill cards, he gets to take them all into his hand which is a lot better than you might think. Anyways, there's some interesting choices here. Um, you can't go wrong with any character. They're all so much fun, but um, like one of these, I think it's Hilo, right? Oh, Hilo was stranded. Um, so you actually lose a turn at the beginning of the game, but that's his only negative. Everything else is positive. Um, I know there's a drug addict in here. Um, Who's the drug addict? Ah, cat. Cat's the drug addict. Um, so she, she's got a, she's a stim junkie. So basically she can't stay in the same place uh, more than one turn. She has to keep moving. Um, Hilo, uh, like I said, uh, there's a pilot Hilo versus a military Hilo. And so this one's stranded, but this one's not. Um, there's, you know, like I said, you pick this one, this one doesn't stay in the game. Boomer is an interesting one because her ability, her negative ability is remember Gaius gets two loyalty cards at the beginning of the game. Boomer gets two loyalty cards during the sleeper phase. <laughs> um, and then, uh, another interesting choice people like is 
Callie, she has discharge of a firearm. She flat out can execute someone. Doesn't, she doesn't even need to pass a test. She can just decide you're dying and she kills you. And I've seen players pick this person and then kill Gaius Baltar in the first turn because he drew two loyalty cards in the beginning and they're just gambling on the fact that there's a high chance that he's the traitor. So they're going to just execute him from day one and uh, hope that they hope that the odds were ever in their favor. <laughs> um, it's an interesting, interesting play. As far as pilots go, it's really hard to beat Starbuck. Starbuck is amazing. Um, Lee Adama is also good. Don't get me wrong. These two are the best pilots in the game. And it is funny because the best characters tend to be the ones up near the top. Um, but these other ones have like just awesome flavor to them. Now, as far as support characters go, um, I have two favorites. The, the Chief is the first one. Um, he has, um, if he does a repair action, he gets a, basically it's, he can do repair actions for free. And if you're a human player, that's huge. That's so huge. But his hand limit is eight instead of 10. So you gotta be careful. Um, but Doc is an amazing character. Um, you can choose a human player and draw two skill cards from his skill set. Then give him two cards from your hand. So you draw these at the start of your turn, but then you can take two cards uh, that belong to another player. Like, for example, he doesn't get any green, so he can go over here to Felix Gaeta, draw two green cards because that's from his skill deck, and then he can give two engineering cards to Gaeta or whatever. Um, so he's really good at uh, manipulating skill cards and whatnot. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is uh, he can't use actions that are on engineering cards. So obviously he's a doctor, he's not an engineer. Um, and these support cards, tend, support players tend to be the ones you're relying on to repair the ship because they're the ones that ball, draw the blue cards, right? Not too many of these characters draw blue cards. I mean, this one does, that one. Yeah, there's a few, but not a lot. Um, so he doesn't do the function that a blue card person should do. Um, but with that said, uh, since he can't use the actions on engineering cards, those are usually the cards he gives away. So somebody else can do those actions. He's drawing the engineering cards for them and then giving them to them. So if you think about it that way, he's really cool. And um, uh, he does get to manipulate the civilian ships uh, as well, but but uh, that's his entire action, by the way, is to, to take those cards. So he doesn't get to do ship actions very much because he's always manipulating cards in his hand. Anyways, I could go through all of them. Uh, it's really uh, a video within itself to go through all these characters. But um, if you were to take one of these ones at the bottom, don't think for a second that you were at a big disadvantage in the game. It's just that they, they tend to be, um, they're very rich in flavor, or um, they do wonky, crazy things. Um, whereas, if you want to be the traditional role of a pilot, take the top two. If you want to be a traditional role of an admiral, take the top two. If you want to be a traditional role of a president, take the top two. If you want to do something crazy, be the, the attorney, <laughs> you know, or... Or Ellen, who has all the treachery cards. Um, it's just, it's an amazing game, and uh, it's actually a boring game if people were to pick the same character over and over again. And as you can see, there's so many to choose from. Uh, you can play this game many times, and of course, this is the advantage of having all the expansions. Uh, not all of these were here in the base game. I couldn't even tell you which ones were base game. I can tell you that, for example, this one is expansion. Uh, there was never duplicates of characters. Uh, this one was the base game. That was some expansion. Uh, Lee Adama was base game. That's an expansion. I mean, I can tell you with certainty that any of these duplicates you see here, um, like there's even a Tom Zarek military leader and a Tom Zarek political leader, for example. All right. Well, that's enough of that. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, stay awesome. And um, there's the summary of the game. 
Uh, there's so much I did not cover, but uh, really that's what you, you'll see as you play. And um, maybe if people have enough uh, requests, I can try to show uh, a round or two of this game. Thank you.